Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, an autumn painting, a classic autumn painting of silver birches and beautiful leaves inspired by this photograph from Pixabay. Um, see the description below for the link to the photograph. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's a quarter imperial sheet and it's taped to my board with ordinary decorators masking tape. My board's at an angle of about 45 degrees and I am first just going to roughly draw in the shapes of the tree trunks and then I'm going to use masking fluid to mask the tree trunks out, the main ones, and a few leaves, a few groups of leaves. And that will make it a lot easier to preserve the white of the paper. Now here you can see where my simple sketch is and you can see the slightly darker marks where the masking fluid is. Once the masking fluid is completely dry, I'm going to use my large ProArt Ron Ranson Harkey brush to wet the page quite unevenly in sort of horizontal and diagonal sort of brush strokes, leaving a few scraps of dry paper for helping me to give some, some texture. Now this is raw sienna. So I'm going to start off my underpainting. I'm just pulling it across and you can see where the masking fluid is. It's resisting the paint and back into burnt sienna, which is a lovely complement to the raw sienna. I'm just randomly streaking it here and there across the background, but I'm going to be trying to leave some areas of the paper unpainted. It should all just soften and diffuse and give me a really nice semi-abstract background, which would be a really good starting point for my autumn birch forest. This is Payne's grey and indigo and I'm going to use this to darken the forest floor a little bit. And I'm going to use a misting spray just to get all those colours running down the page and blending and sort of mingling together on the page um, to give me these beautiful effects darkened it up across the bottom, adding a little bit more spray into the very dark areas of paint. And then I shall lay it flat and leave it to dry once it gets to a point where I like it. Um, if I let it dry flat, then the paint will stop running down the page, if you see what I mean. If I kept it at this angle, the paint would eventually sort of more or less run off. So. I've laid my board flat. I'm just going to mop up any liquid and water across the bottom because I don't want that to run back and cause some nasty marks. So I'll let that dry now. So it's now all dry. And so all I want to do now before I get on painting those birch trunks is put in a bit of uh, a few distant twigs and branches and trees mixing up a very pale mixture of Payne's grey and indigo uh, plenty of water and I'm using my pro art synthetic sword liner size small for this it's a fairly new brush that I'm experimenting with really useful for these sorts of very fine pale lines that I just want to have crisscrossing the background just to indicate a few distant trees. And now I'll leave that for five minutes just to let that dry and then come back and start painting in the birch trunks. So I have removed all the masking fluid, rubbed it all off and you can see it's left me these lovely marks. So now I've got to do something with them and sort of bring the painting together. So I'm using my three quarter inch synthetic Cotman flat brush and I'm going to wet the trunks individually. Once the trunk's wet, 
that I'm going to mix up. Um, actually, my half inch flat, I think. I keep getting them confused. I'm going to mix up Payne's Grey and Indigo and drop it into the wet tree trunk, um, sort of in fairly uneven ways. I'm going to try and keep the shadow and the darker patches of paint on the left side of my trees so it looks as if the light is hitting on the right side and I want to try and build up sort of the very typical silver birch markings um, just suggestions of um, horizontal lines and bands and dots and things across that mostly silver uh, bark you see, I'm getting darker and darker, bringing those lines across, but still keeping um, the right side nice and light. And once I've put the paint in like that, I can use a tissue and carefully dab out some extra light here and there and just knock back any bits that have gone in a little bit too dark. I'll work on this tree in exactly the same way wetting the trunk first. That will mean that my paint that I put on, while it's still wet, will just diffuse and soften and just give me a lovely um, bark-like, silver birch bark-like textures. I'm trying to keep a nice, nice variety and variation of tone just pulling across those lovely distinctive silver barge sort of growth lines and markings. I'm not looking for anything too detailed or too specific here. I just want the sort of impression of birch trees. And you can see that I've worked across all of the tree trunks in exactly the same way. And now I'm just adding a few dots and dashes for some extra texture. If you're interested in the full process, over on Patreon, there's um, a four part tutorial which shows the drawing process, um, the masking out, and every brush stroke just about in real time. So follow the link to Patreon if you think that might be something that you'd be interested in. I'm now going to let those trunks dry completely and then come back and finish the painting. Well, it's all nice and dry. And so I've got some cadmium yellow here, with lovely rich color. I'm just going to knock it back a little bit to start with, with some of the more sort of earthy raw sienna. And using a small squirrel mop and then changing to a small calligraphy brush, I'll start roughing in my loose groups of leaves, autumn leaves, keeping it very loose, semi-abstract. I'm not painting individual leaves, I'm just going to paint in these big patches of leaves and then dot in with more detail, um, adding some burnt sienna um, for the sort of orangey parts of the leaves. Spraying with the mister as well, so that I get these lovely lost and found soft and hard edges. And here's the burnt sienna. I think at this stage it's easier to use the tip of this fine calligraphy brush, or I think it's called a rat liner. Um, dotting in and just building up sort of detail that isn't detail, just suggestions of leaves. And I'll work across my whole page in the same way, changing up from cadmium yellow to the burnt sienna, um, 
making sure that I don't cover up all of my masked out leaf areas. I want some of that white sparkle to really um, look like sunlight, dappled sunlight through the trees, um, really sort of sparkling across the picture. Now this is sap green. So I'm just bringing in just a few leaves that have yet to turn and yet to change to their autumn colours. And I think the introduction of green here really works beautifully against the autumn colours. I'm not going to overdo this, otherwise I think that would be overkill, but just a few spots of green here and there really lifts the whole picture. All my other colours are Cotman colours straight from the tube. This is Jackson's own brand artist quality sap green. It's a lovely colour and Jackson's paints are really good value. I think that's just about enough of the sap green. I think that works really, really well. And next it's back to my Payne's Grey and going to link up those patches of leaves and foliage with some branches, just some thinner branches coming in front of and behind those tree trunks, leaving gaps where the, um, the leaves are covering the branches and just pulling a few branches through to finish off um, this sort of illusion of this patch of forest that we're looking at here. And now while everything's still moist, um, pulling the corner of a plastic card or you could use a palette knife or your fingernail through the paint to bring out some, well to lift out some sort of silver branches. So we're going back to the white of the paper and it contrasts nicely with the rest of the, um, the dark branches and all that foliage. Just a few more branches across the bottom. And I think that's all I need. I think now I shall remove the tape, um, being careful to pull it away from the painting um, so that if it was to catch and tear, it won't tear into the painting, it'll tear away. And it gives me a chance to see it with fresh eyes um, with this nice clean white border, somehow it sort of makes it look really different and it can actually help you to spot maybe something that's slightly not quite balanced and I've seen something that I'm less keen on now, now that I'm seeing it like this. So I'm just going to add a slightly thicker branch that overlaps one of the tree trunks just here and I think I'll be much happier to see the branch coming out from from the front of this tree trunk. Just smudge it down a bit with my finger there. And that'll do, just gotta be careful not to overdo it and start fiddling. So I'm quite happy with that for my first ever sort of um, silver birch tree painting. And I hope it was useful to you. I hope that you enjoyed watching uh, my version of this sort of classic autumn painting. Um, thanks so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.